morning everyone so I'm taking you to one of my little secret places that I go when I want to just think about life so I'm sitting under a massive tree that we have where I live and I'm beside the river that's my doggy and that's the river milk hair so that will go in to Limerick City um, so I've just had my run and I'm giving my doggy her little walk. So I hope everyone's doing okay and minding themselves and finding a balance between all the things we should be doing. I've got sticky up here and the slowdown where we're just minding our mental health and reaching out and connecting and supporting one another. Um, I know it's not easy, but there is some useful things that we can take out of this if we if we focus there. And it might be time to maybe think about writing a vision board for yourself. Um, if you've never heard of one, there will be lots of places on Google that will help you understand what that is and how to make one. But at various points in my life, that's what I've done. I've created a picture and word and quote vision board for what I've wanted to have in my life um, and it's amazing how just doing that alone starts to bring it your way and creates clarity about what you what you want life to look like um, it's really interesting like we're starting to see that as society we are prepared to do things for one another um, and yet on bigger issues like climate change so little is done and um, so I think we now need to start looking towards our governments to giving us real guidance on how we can make change there because it's obvious that we we will do it if we're incentivized and motivated to do it and if it if it matters enough and I think we're now seeing that the change has to start from the top the companies the fashion industry has to change just how much we pollute and are wasteful and Anyway, that's a rant for another day. So, I'm going to just give you your little task for the day, which is to look at your diet and assess how good it is for the healthy fats that we should have in our diet and look at if there's places that we can make changes where there may be perhaps fats in our diets that aren't as healthful. So, why are fats important and why are they important right now? Well. Fats are structural, so they are the 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 the, the, the support net. The, the, well, I'm digging myself in a hole here. They're a very important component of the cell membrane, and you can think of the cell membrane like the that little thin membrane that surrounds an egg. And every cell in our bodies has a membrane that is constructed of fats. So the type of fats that we eat in our diets are the building blocks to that cell membrane. And the building blocks are important as to how the cell main membrane functions. So why so many health conditions are linked with um, poor quality or processed or fake like trans, unnatural to the body fats is because they're messing up the body on some level regarding the cell membrane. And from that, um, how inflammation happens within the body. So when I talk about inflammation, that's a response that's going to happen. For example, if we catch the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the amount and type of inflammation that happens can be in part determined by the type of fats that we have in our diet. So we can be pro-inflammatory or have an inflammatory response that's inappropriate or excessive um, we're negative if we're consuming a lot of the incorrect fats and we can modulate or moderate the inflammatory response into a more appropriate one if we've had a long-term diet that is built on healthy fats. Um, so that's one reason right now why we might want to look at making some changes to the types of fats that we're eating in our diets. Other reasons are that our brain is largely constructed from, from fats. So if we want 
good brain function, healthy brain, obviously, that's, and, and, and mood, obviously the type of fats are important there. If we're an athlete and we want to be less injury and inflammation prone, that's another reason to have ample healthy fats. Um, so there is everything in the body can be related to the quality of fats that we're eating. So we need some, they're very important, especially for um, children that are growing, infants, um, babies in the womb even. Um, so given we may have limitations right now, what sort of changes can we look at making? Well, the rule of natural real foods always applies and then you may want to educate yourself a little bit on what are the omega-3 groups, what are the omega-6s, what are the omega-9s, what are saturated fats. Um, but it's interesting because some food groups have several of, of these classifications. So for example, grass-fed meat has some saturated fats, it has some monounsaturated fats, and it has an abundance of omega-3s actually. So when you're thinking about meat, if it's grass-fed and a cow has eaten grass, which has omega-3s, um, it's going to be a healthy source of fat compared to maybe a, a, a cow that has been reared on a, a CAFO, so a factory reared, I suppose would be the word, that has been fed uh, grains and foods that wouldn't, wouldn't be a normal source of nutrition for a cow just left to its own devices in a field. Um, so fish would be another example. So we know that sam the oily cold water fish, salmon, sardines, mackerel, um, herring, haddock, um, they would have a good source of omega-3s. Um, however, if a salmon has been reared, farmed and fed meal and, and poor quality food, the fats from that food are going to be incorporated into that salmon and into the structure of its fat and then we're consuming it and it's of poor quality and it's not at all the same quality or content of omega-3. We want the fish to be swimming wild at sea and eating algae and other wild fish. So the source of our fish is incredibly important. Um, when it comes to the fats and oils that we're cooking with, we want them to be um, natural we want them to have not been processed or have had chemicals added to them. So that's why we choose cold pressed, um, organic, virgin oils. So your virgin olive oil, your unprocessed, um, organic, non-heat treated um, sunflower oils or rapeseed oils or avocado oils or flaxseed oils. So these oils are very, very delicate. So they want to be cold pressed and organic and I think they really only use the term virgin when it comes to olive oil, um, but it's the same thing. Um, so the quality of your oils is very important, and it's important with the more delicate oils, so the polyunsaturated oils like your omega-3s and omega-6s, that we minimize the temperature that we cook them at so that they are protected and preserved and don't become heat damaged. Um, then we're looking at things like nuts and seeds. So flax seeds, chia seeds um, are incredibly good for us. They're very good for the gut because they're very high in fiber, but they're also rich in omega-3, although it's a little bit difficult for our, us to digest those um, seeds down. So either milling them or soaking them is going to help them um, be better digested. And there's some fantastic birds flying along here. Sorry, I don't know what it is. Um, he's black with some white and he's flying very low to the river. Um, so, yeah, quick, before I hit this 10-minute cutoff that makes my life hell when I have to upload it. Um, nuts, seeds, so pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, walnuts, macadamias, almonds, um, Brazils, cashews in their natural state, or you can soak them to improve nutritional bioavailability. Um, don't have them salted or, or heat processed when possible. Um, so there are a couple of things for you to work on with adding healthy fats into your diet. Um, another one I would add is actually butter, grass-fed butter. It's rich in butyrate, vitamin A, D, E, K. So that's also going to be helpful for you to add to the diet. Avocado, um, and there are some fruits that actually have omega-3 in them. So there you go. Get working on it. Take care. Bye.